Hi everyone. I just wanted to go through this test review and give you guys some sample solving of mostly the wave problems, but I'll kind of go through everything. Uh, because this week you do have a test and we haven't had a lot of time in class to review problems and some of you have not come to my office hours, even though I know for a fact you need help. So hopefully this reaches you well and you actually derive some assistance from it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is part one, finding an element that matches the following characteristics. So I have listed for you different things on the periodic table, and your job is to find an element that fits that criteria. So for example, number one, an alkali metal. To find one of those, you would go over to the periodic table, which I have right here, and you should absolutely have in front of you. And what you're going to do is you're going to look for the group that fits that criteria. So for us, an alkaline earth metal is going to be this group right here. It's going to be group number two. So those are the alkaline earth metals. And yes, I did abbreviate that AEM. So you could pick anything in this group if you wanted to. You could pick beryllium or magnesium or calcium or strontium or barium or radium. It doesn't really matter to me which one you happen to pick. So I'm just going to pick the first one on the list, beryllium. Okay, and I'm abbreviating. You can write the whole name if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. Um, a halogen is going to be found in group 17. So the halogens are this group right here. So you could pick fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, any of those. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and pick fluorine. A metalloid is going to be found along the staircase. So the staircase, which I'm going to poorly trace right here, is right there. If you have not already darkened this line and made it obvious for yourself on your own periodic table, I highly suggest that you do. Um, so you could pick anything that really hugs this staircase. So aluminum or germanium or silicon or arsenic or any of those antimony. I'm going to pick antimony because why not? Or if you wanted the chemical symbol for it, you could go with SB. A group 13 element. This one should be one of the easiest things for you to do because all you have to do is count your columns. So if you go all the way over to column number 13, that is going to be group 13. So I'm going to pick aluminum. An alkali metal. That's going to be group number one. So those are alkali metals right there. This excludes hydrogen, by the way. So hydrogen is not a metal. Remember, I told you that hydrogen was one of those exceptions. It's found in group one, but it's not a metal. So do not pick hydrogen for one of those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick sodium for my alkali metals. A period three element. Remember, those are our rows straight across, row one, row two, row three. So anything in row three would work. I'm going to go ahead and go with magnesium. Something that has 21 protons. So that's pretty specific. You would have to find element number 21, which in this case is this one right here, scandium. A P block element. Now, so now remember, a P block is the one that is over here, excluding, of course, helium. So I'm going to go with selenium or selenium, as you could pronounce that. A nonmetal, again, is anything that's over here to the right of the staircase, but also hydrogen. So I'm going to go ahead and pick bromine. and an F block element. So that could be any one of these down here. I'm going to go ahead and pick thorium because why not? All right. Now we're going to match the following group to its name. So noble gases is going to be group 18, which is this one all the way on the right. An alkali metal, as I mentioned before, is going to be group one. 
A halogen, as I mentioned before, is going to be group 17. Chalcogens is group 16. Alkaline earth metals is group 2. Tell what block the following element is in, S, P, D, or F. So remember, S block is this block right here. P block is over here. D block is these transition elements in the middle. And F block are the ones down, kind of separated from the rest of them. So magnesium, you look for magnesium. You find out that that is in the S block. Iron is in your D block. Carbon is going to be found in your P block. Sulfur is also going to be in your P block and uranium is going to be in your F block. Now we're getting to writing the ground state electron configurations for the following elements and then drawing the electron diagrams for the last or highest energy level. So I'm going to switch to actually using hand drawing for this. So if we go and we look for boron, that's going to be right here. Change color right here. So we read the periodic table from left to right. We start with 1s2, then we have 2s2. Then we actually get to stop with 2p1. So that's going to be our ground side electron configuration. And for the electron orbital diagram, for the last or highest energy level, you're going to draw it out for this last portion of our electron configuration. So p's are going to have three boxes, and there's only one electron here, so we just have one upward facing arrow, and that's it. Silicon, down here, that's going to be our next one. We got our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and finally 3p2. So once again, our last one is p, so we get our three boxes. And this time there's two electrons in it, so we go one and two. Nickel is right here, so we're moving into something that has a D energy level in it. So we go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d, and then we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3d, 8. We have a d as our final electron configuration portion. So we have five boxes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 electrons. So remember ups before downs. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six, seven, eight, and we have those two unpaired there. Potassium is going to be this one. So we're going to have our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. Okay? So our last one is an S, therefore we only have one box and there's only one electron in it, so we have one upward facing arrow. And last but not least, we have copper, which is right next to nickel, actually. So its electron configuration is going to be pretty similar to nickel's. We're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. So now, again, D is our last one, five boxes, one, two, three, four, five, nine electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and only one unpaired right there. So those are ground state electron configurations. Um, I hope that that makes sense to you. If not, you're going to need to find some time to ask me a question before the test. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all this stuff, and then I'm going to move downward.
All right, part five, we have electron dot structures. So this again is dependent on your groups in your periodic table. So let me just go ahead and label something on the periodic table for you. I highly encourage you to do the same. Group one's gonna have one valence electron, group two's gonna have two valence electrons, group 13 has three, 14 has four, 15 has five, 16 has six, 17 has seven, and group 18 is gonna have eight. So this is once again in neutral state. So my hope is that you already have this labeled on your periodic table if you were in class and following directions. So we're gonna draw the electron dot structure for all of these. Now, I have to talk about helium though, because helium is gonna be your one exception to this group rule. And it makes sense if you think about it because helium is our second element, which means it has two protons. So in neutral state, it's only gonna have two electrons. So don't forget about that and accidentally give helium eight electrons. So all we have to do is we have to draw out the chemical symbol for helium, and we are going to go ahead and put two dots around it. And that's it. Do not pair them up. Remember, you do your up, down, left, right, or left, right, up, down. You have to have four unpaired before you can go back and start pairing them up. Silicon, already circled for you, but if you forgot, it's right there. That's going to be in group 14, so it's going to have four electrons. So we go SI, we go one, two, three, four. Alrighty. Bromine is right here in group 17, so it's going to go ahead and have seven electrons. I'm going to do bromine a little bit over here so it doesn't get messy. We have bromine, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have that one unpaired spot over here. Calcium is going to be right here in group two. It's only going to have two electrons, so one, two. Boron, already circle over here. It's going to have three electrons since it's in group 13. So you have your letter B and then you go one, two, three. And that's all you have to do. Um, so once again, I'm gonna go ahead and erase and then I'm going to move downward to our wave problems, which I think is what most people are going to want to pay attention to here. All right, so we have our wave problems. And I'm just going to kind of plow through them. But what I am also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write over here our speed equation, our wavelength equation, and our constants just down right here. You will have access to this on your test. So first we have our speed equation, speed equals lambda times nu. We have our energy equation, which is E equals Planck's constant times frequency, or Planck's constant times nu. Um, we have our speed of light, or C, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we have Planck's constant, which is H, and that is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. Okay, so a couple of things about this. Lambda is going to be wavelength. And then this here is going to be frequency. Wavelength is always going to be given to you in some variation of meters, most likely. So it has to be in meters when you plug it into the problem. Frequency is going to be in hertz, given to you like that. Energy is going to be given to you in joules, and speed is more than likely going to be given to you in meters per second. Okay? So if you see these units popping up in your problem, you should be able to tell me what it is without being told, okay? So let's start with number one. It says, what is the speed of an electromagnetic wave with a frequency of three hertz and a wavelength of 2.25 nanometers? So I was nice to you. I gave you the conversion factor from nanometers to meters as well. So let's look at the problem and break it down. I want to know speed. What is the speed? So that means that we're going to be using our speed equation at some point. I'm giving you frequency. Frequency is a part of the speed equation. I also give you wavelength. Wavelength is a part of the speed equation. So we are only having to use this particular equation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it down over here. Speed equals lambda times nu. 
So I want to know speed, so that's going to be our variable. I'm giving you wavelength and frequency, so those two numbers are numbers that we have. But our wavelength is not given in meters, so first we have to convert it. So what we're going to do is over here, we're going to have our 2.25 nanometers over 1. Um, we're moving towards meters. I'm getting rid of nanometers on the bottom. So we have one nanometer equals one times 10 to the negative ninth meters. That's another way to write this. You can also say 10 to the negative ninth meters. I would continue to use this form personally because that's what you're most used to. So if we did that multiplication, we would end up with 2.25 times 10 to the negative ninth meters over one because our nanometers is going to cancel out our nanometers and then we get 2.25 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Okay, so that is our new lambda. I'm going to change colors to do the rest of the problem so that nobody gets confused. I'm going to draw a little line. Now we need to actually use our speed equation. So I'm going to abbreviate speed s equals the lambda that we just figured out, 2.25 times 10 to the negative ninth meters times our frequency, which is three hertz, okay? So speed, once we plug this into a calculator, which again, you only need to multiply your raw numbers, so 2.25 times three, that's gonna give us 6.75 five times 10 to the negative ninth meters, okay? So now we have to pay attention to sig figs. What, you have to go through the problem, you have to look for your least amount of sig figs, which in this case is contributed by our hertz because that's only one sig fig. So what we have to do is we have to round this off to one sig fig, which in this case is gonna be seven times 10 to the negative ninth meters. And that is going to be your answer. Okay, so that one wasn't too terrible. Number two, if a wave is traveling at 50 meters per second and has a frequency of two hertz, what's its speed? So this one, when I was going through, I actually discovered that there's a typo in here um, because what you should know by looking at meters per second, that's a measure of speed. So I can't also ask you for speed. So if you were struggling with this one, I apologize. I apologize, I'm actually supposed to be asking you for wavelength, so you can go ahead and you can kind of strike that out and then put in wavelength. So I wanna know wavelength here, okay? So we have speed, we have frequency. Those are two parts of the speed equation. I'm asking you for the third part of the speed equation. Therefore, this one, the energy equation, does not even factor in to this problem. So we set this up. We go 50 meters per second equals wavelength, which is our variable that I'm asking for, times our frequency, which is two hertz. We solve for lambda, or our wavelength, by dividing both sides by two. So we divide this side by two, it cancels out. We divide that side by two. 50 divided by two is 25. So we get lambda equals 25 meters. Now, once again, sig figs. We have one sig fig. So our answer cannot have two sig figs. So we have to actually round this off to 30 meters. I know it sounds weird, but you have to. Okay, number three. What is the frequency of a photon that has a wavelength of 1.18 times 10 to the negative eighth meters? Well, there are a couple of things that you should pay attention to in this problem. One, I'm asking for frequency. So at this point, you could be using either one. You don't know yet of a photon. A photon is light. That is referring to light. Therefore, whatever speed this wave happens to be traveling in at is the speed of light because it is a photon. And it has a wavelength of this. So I'm asking for frequency. You know the speed because it says photon and I'm giving you wavelength. So therefore, once again, we're using the speed equation. So 
Uh, speed, I'm going to fill that in, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals, again, I'm giving you wavelength, so you plug that in immediately for lambda, 1.18 times 10 to the negative eighth meters, and I want frequency, which is our funny little E, so that's our problem, okay? Now, how we solve this problem, we divide both sides by 1.18 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. We divide the right side by it, it cancels out. We divide the left side by it, we get a number. So I'm going to switch colors real quick. Um, what we do, because our action is actually doing this. Now, remember in class, I split this up into two for us, okay? So what happens here is you're going to divide your raw numbers, 3 divided by 1.18, and that's going to give you 2.54. And I'm just going to round it off there. Then we deal with our exponents. So we're going to have times 10 to the something. 8 minus negative 8 is going to give you 16. And then our unit for frequency is always going to be hertz. So. Now we need to see if we've done sig figs correctly. So we have 3.00, that's three sig figs. We have 1.18, that's three sig figs. Our answer is 2.54, that's three sig figs, so we're fine. 2.54 times 10 to the 16th hertz is going to be your answer. Number four, I'm gonna switch colors once again. A photon, so again, we're talking about light, has a frequency of 1.10 times 10 to the negative 13th joules. What is that photon's wavelength and what is that photon's energy? So this problem is asking you for two things. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a little squiggly line down the middle. We'll do one on one side and one on the other. So frequency, once again, that's that V. Photon, we're talking about light, therefore we know its speed. So we can find its wavelength without an issue. So we just set our problem up, our 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals our wavelength times our frequency, our 1.10 times 10 to the negative 13th joules. Oh, sorry, that's not supposed to be joules, that's supposed to be hertz, another typo. Again, I apologize for that. So that's hertz. So now we solve. Again, we're going to divide by this number to isolate lambda. Once we do that math, we're going to get 2.73. And then we deal with our exponents. We're going to do 8 minus our negative 13. So we have times 10 to the something. And in this case, 8 minus a negative 13 is going to give us 21. If we're talking about wavelength, that's going to be meters. So have we done our sig figs correctly? We have one, two, three sig figs. Three times on the eighth has one, two, three sig figs. So we're fine. Our answer for wavelength is this. Now moving over to what's its energy. Energy is only found in the energy equation. So we're going to use that energy equation, shockingly. So we go over there. I want to know energy. Therefore, it is our variable. Planck's constant is a constant, it never changes, so we plug in 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds, and we're going to multiply that by, hey, frequency, our given number once again. 1.10 times 10 to the negative 13th, again, that's in hertz, I apologize for the typo. We multiply those two numbers together. Once we've done that, we're going to get energy equals 7.29, yes, I'm rounding that off, times 10 to the something. Now, we add our exponent since we're multiplying. Negative 34 plus negative 13 is going to give us negative 47, and energy is measured in joules. So, double check our sig figs. Our given number is three sig figs. This is four sig figs, so our answer needs to have three. Three sig figs in our answer. We are good to go. Last but not least, number five. So this one is a little bit more like the calculations that we did in class. It's gonna be a multiple part one. We use both equations. This one says a photon has an energy of 3.45 times 10 to the 22nd joules. What is its wavelength? 
So I'm giving you energy, which tells you you need to use the energy equation. And I'm asking for wavelength, which tells you you need to use the speed equation. So we need both. Since I'm giving you energy, you're gonna start with the energy equation. We plug in 3.45 times 10 to the 22nd joules for E. Again, the H is always a constant, so we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. And we are solving for frequency because it's the only thing that we're not given in that equation. If we do our math right by dividing both sides by Planck's constant, we are going to come out with 0 0.521 times 10 to the 56th hertz. Okay, so let me just reiterate why that happened. We're dividing 3.45 by 6.626. That's where we get the 0 0.521 from. I've rounded off to three sig figs because our 3.45 times 10 to the 22nd has three sig figs. And we have 22 minus a negative 34, giving us 56 as our exponent. All right, so that's part one. We switch colors. Part two, we figured out frequency. I want to know wavelength. It says photon in the problem, so once again, we are dealing with light. So we have all the parts necessary to use our speed equation. Since we're dealing with light, we're using 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second as our speed. I'm solving for wavelength, and I use my frequency that I just found. And I can solve for my lambda. So now, once again, we are going to divide by our frequency on both sides. If I do that math correctly, we get lambda equals 5.76 times 10 to the negative 48th meters. So to go over why that is, we divide 3 by 0.521. We get our 5.76, which again, I'm rounding that, but I'm rounding it to three sig figs because three sig figs is what we started with. And we have our 8 minus our 56 because with division we subtract our exponents and our unit is going to be meters. So I am well aware that you could just mindlessly copy what I've just done here and not listen to a single thing that I have said the entire time. Um, but frankly, if you do that and you try not to learn anything from it, you're going to get a bad grade on the test and I don't want that for you. So my hope is that you took me working these problems and used it to your advantage to maybe apply that knowledge to the waves worksheet or something so that you could learn something and succeed on the test. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now and hopefully this is helpful to you.